So the first thing to do is organise the respective teams. Uh, Individuals take your take your water with you. No, you guys, you don't need the sprint. We've got a sprinting team. From the more speedy ones, we'll walk down and be as close as we can to the net to race out to work with the birds. But of course, they still need to be hidden from the birds. This site's quite a tricky site to get down to, which is why I'm splitting the team up in this instance. There's always those lots of last minute things to do. Don't forget the radios, don't forget the firing box. Um, Nick is coming in the hide to fire the box. And uh, Paul's it. coming in the hide. And disarm it. Um, and disarm it. <laughs> The rest of you guys, you're just going to be waiting here. You might get some lovely views of birds flying by. It might be a bit warm. Um, the breeze is up and you know the, the drill. When we go fire, you've got to go, you guys have got to go really quick. Please don't come a cropper over these rocks, okay? Do be a bit careful going through those rocks. And, and, the, and the beach, sorry, the net is about 50 metres um, that way. It's west. All right, we'll just sneak out and see if there's anything. As you look out there, you can see where we walked, and then there's a, a, a flat area. And you, can you see four white stones? Yeah. Okay, because that's where we have to get the birds, and that's where the net will go over. Chris and Matt, do you read me? Yes, sir. Could we have your birds, please? I can see you, um, and you can obviously see you've got some guys fishing there, which will actually quite possibly help us. A lot of people wonder why sometimes we don't catch birds, because there's thousands of birds out there, but they don't realise we've got a, a little zone there that's about six metres in depth and about uh, 20 metres long, and we need to get the birds in that area. All we've got to do is wait for the tide, okay. because of course, with a number of kites and things and little boats going by, that's why it's, I mean, that is perfectly set at the minute. You just wait for another 20 minutes of tide or whatever and they walk up in front of the net, but never that simple. You see one of my guys out there, this is Grant, one of our long-term volunteers. He's out there, not actually bothering to move the birds, he's, he's just what I would say, putting a bit of pressure on them to make sure that they are towards the net rather than wandering off down the beach away from the net. This is a typical site, they're just milling around. Um, but uh, the closest one's 12 metres from the net and there's starting to just go out this side of the net. But uh, if we can keep them settled, we're in good shape. You ready? Three, two, one, fire. Yeah, enormous. Do that, Bob.
Process. Tarek, the same. Curly Sands, a bill yeah. and a weight. Just a bill. Just yeah, we've got the odds and sods. Everyone else gets fixed fishes, but we, we're doing all the leftovers, which That's is good. good. <laughs> so we've got Curly Sandpipers, Red Knots, Tarek Sandpipers, and Ruddy Turnstone. We're going to be doing. We're taking weight measurements, we're taking uh, uh, measurements of wing length and uh, bill length, for example, yeah. uh, having a look at the molting stages of the birds. And uh, uh, maybe yeah, banding, so that we can get our uh, records for later on. This is a safe way of weighing birds. Slide the bird in the tube, and then they can sit on these electronic balances, which gives us an idea of uh, body condition and health of the bird. And in some cases, it helps us to sex them because there's obvious size differences between the males and females. We record the molt, which helps us to age some of the birds. We record if they're in breeding plumage at all, and when we put a flag on, we make a note of the number. This is a Terex Sandpiper. Here he has his nice shiny new band on him. And on this one we have a uh, colour flag, from now forth to be known as CJ. Now this is a young bird. You can tell if you look at the wing, all these feathers here are very worn and abraded. These are juvenile type feathers. We've left the nest rears up in the Arctic, and then they contrast with these nice fresh ones that he's recently grown. So these would be adult type feathers. Full length of 22.5. Is that W2? W2. W2. Um, yes, reasonably new, yeah. So that we can see birds in the wild without having to catch them and actually identify them. 